Some folks in the comments said that the Konosuba TRPG doesn't feel very much like Konosuba. And that's a fair assessment. What made Konosuba an endearing show is that it was lampooning an overused plot device and that its protagonists are some of the worst people you can imagine. People like a wizard that can only use one spell before passing out. A goddess that, yes, has divine power, but is only able to use it in very specific situations. And a knight that can take a beating, but never dish it back out. It's not their powers that make them interesting, though. It's that despite their immense power, they are flawed to the point of being nearly useless. But that kind of explanation doesn't necessarily make for good tabletop role-playing game discussion. So... I wanted to see what it would take to create the cast of Konosuba in the RPG that bears the same name, and see if we can at least get some of the memes right. The short answer, in case you haven't figured out from the thumbnail or the link to this video, is yes. So, with that said, let's go ahead and look into how it's possible and what other implications the rules of this game gives us on this matter. Being a show about a fantasy world that runs on video game logic made it really easy for me to find a suitable starting point. They literally have all the classes that are named in the show, and those classes are present in the game. This is as good as a starting point as any. And Kazuma is the easiest to make. Level 1 Adventurer. Boom. You're done. And this is where some of the problems of trying to adapt a show to a tabletop role-playing game can become apparent. Adventurer is... not as terrible a class in the game as it is in the show. Sure, you start with one less skill point at level 1 when you take Adventurer, but besides that and not having any particular area that you excel, Adventurer is not a bad class, since you don't have the requirements that Kazuma had to go through in the show to learn new skills. You're just assumed to have learned them between adventures when you level up. No need to actually find a teacher like he did. But let's continue on, shall we? I want to see what other cracks can form using this method. Megamine is also pretty straightforward. She only knows one spell, and that spell is Explosion. But when we take a look at the Wizard class, there's no Explosion. That would be in the purview of the Arch Wizard class, which is what her class in the show is. And it's typically only held by some of the most powerful magic users in the world. And the Explosions that Megamine throws around are nothing to sneeze at. So, it's not too crazy to expect her to have a class that requires her to be such a high level to achieve. Furthermore, Explosion has the prerequisite of having a skill called Chanting at level 5. And all this would put her at level 12, if we were to use the stats in the game. But this brings us to two discrepancies. First, going straight for Explosion would leave her with so many unused skill points. And second... The requirements for being an arch wizard in the show is stat requirements, not level requirements. And similar themes to this come up with Aqua and when Darkness. To be their named class from the show, they need insanely high levels, not insanely high stats. Even though the skills that do give them the powers that they're known for in the show do exist. The problem though is that these come with a lot of extra features since they'll have plenty of other skill points that are available. And this brings up a broader problem I have with how do you play as X character from Y media? There's usually a lot of superfluous things that come along with the main gimmick, since tabletop role-playing games follow a certain logic that you don't necessarily see in other works of fiction. There is often some sort of progression, and there may or may not be notions of balance. And depending on how the progression is structured if at all, you can wind up with some wildly divergent abilities from the source material. And so the most ideal way to recreate weird gimmicks like the cast of Konosuba is to play something like GURPS or HERO, where by rules as written, you have a lot more freedom than in most other games to make your character do what you want them to. In fact, a running joke with the character Kiros from the Irregular Webcomic was that he was supposedly a character in a GURPS fantasy game, and he had the same shtick that Megamine has. He only knows one spell, Fireball, and it is way too powerful. And because of the only thing he ever uses, the GM says that's the only thing he can ever improve. That said, 
The specific abilities aren't necessarily what make the characters in Konosuba interesting, but how it interacts with the other aspects of their character. In the show, Kazuma has poor stats, so he has one of the worst classes until he gets more powerful, and he thus has to make the most of the one feature his class does have, the ability to learn any skill, so long as he can find a teacher. By contrast, Aqua is incredibly powerful, but also incredibly stupid. So most of her skills are only useful in a few very specific situations because she chose some of the worst skills and thus wound up very poorly optimized. And Megamine is incredibly powerful, but she can only cast her signature spell once. Darkness, she is incredibly tough, and she makes any fight she's in really awkward, either because she cannot fight, or she... Now, this isn't to say that Konosuba TRPG does a bad job of recreating the show that Konosuba is. I dare say it's one of the better options even, since it remains familiar enough to the likes of D&D or video games that, with some time, any player could adjust and learn the rules that underpin the Konosuba TRPG. Which, we'd probably have to do all kinds of weird multi-classing shenanigans to get something even remotely close to Megamine using Dungeons and Dragons. With even more superfluous traits that she simply doesn't exhibit. Megamine knows one spell. She can only cast it once per day, and it is insanely powerful. And magic simply never scaled that way in D&D. Which, I mean, we could just straight up ignore the rules of D&D as presented and add in some homebrew rules put in by DM Fiat. But at that point, I'd say why even bother playing Dungeons & Dragons if we're going to deviate that much from the rules? So as I said numerous times already, it's the outlandish abilities they have combined with their foibles and features that make the cast of Konosuba interesting. The real way to make a tabletop role-playing game like Konosuba is to play literally any game, and let the players act on their worst impulses, and take the consequences of certain game mechanics to an extreme. You have a character that's always picking fights? Let them. But don't have any NPCs they fight necessarily be killed. They'll be grievously injured, scarred for life, but not necessarily dead. Or you can make death a minor inconvenience. That way, if the player gets unlucky, They'll never die from any fights that they pick, but they do wind up momentarily cast out like the nuisance that they are. And if they do win a lot of their fights, that just builds up for a scene where they do eventually get their just desserts. The most important thing to keep in mind with all of this, though, is that both the GM and the players should communicate their intents to do so. It's okay to break kayfabe and let the GM know that you're wanting your character to be a violent sociopath that gets put back in their place more often than not. Just as, if you're the GM, you should be willing to assuage a player's anxieties that their character going to jail is not the end of that character. You just think it would be funny that being thrown in jail ends with them becoming the boss of a prison gang or something. It's kind of like when you're with your sweetheart making sweet, sweet love down by the fire. It's generally better to be upfront about what you want to do if it's something weird, instead of just surprising them by...